Hey there guys, Andrew Maximoff here again from Art as a Verb, and it is my pleasure to share with you today another personal project of mine, uh, not a piece of art, but rather a tool this time, a plugin for Photoshop to be more precise, that's called Materially, and this plugin is supposed to help you guys out, you know, painting with materials right inside of Photoshop, and help you out in organizing your material library and reusing your material presets, ensuring that you have some consistency between your next-gen assets that are saving a ton of production time. So this video is going to be a short demo of that and let's dive right in. So what you're seeing right now is a bunch of assets that I stored in one PSD file that we're going to be using to uh, you know more effectively show the production pipeline of how you would use material. And this is the preset interface that you see there but it's not meant to be up all the time and this is kind of one of the core philosophies behind material and that everything's done with hotkeys and no distractions from your you know usual Photoshop pipeline. So what I'm doing right now is I'm importing materials into my Photoshop file and as you can see it's just the one hotkey press and I get my uh, material library structure where I just choose a material type and they're boom imported into my PSD just like that. And then in the previous PSD that you saw I have just my material masks that you can uh, you know render out or you can create them by hand if you want but basically that's what I'm doing right now I'm just going around and applying those to my material presets so I have say blued steel and wood and you know worn steel and gold and I'm just applying that right there and then you can see me just fixing things up by hand a bit where it's messed up and there you go uh, the interesting thing here is that you can decouple uh, the mask from the actual material so I'm uh, increasing tiling on that wooden handle to get more resolution and now you see me looking at the normal map right and the normal map is all high frequency noise but then I go into my global folder here for my global detail and my materials and I just set it to overlay and then you get this fancy normal map and I just hit one button and it's saved out as, you, as you've seen and this is just a neat little trick that I like to use where I take that high frequency normal map and I just use that uh, to bake a curvature map out of substance so that's what you see me do right there and the detail is set to 0 0.2 so you don't get it extra noisy and then that's it as you can see it's done right there and I just snapshot it back into into my materials PSD here and then I transfer that and ambient occlusion into the actual into the actual working PSD for my asset and I put them in a group called masks because that's where we're going to produce a mask for painting like this uh, mask for recesses that we get from that detail map uh, detail map curvature detail normal map curvature and same here for my you know uh, convex bits where you know the protruding edges and stuff like that and this we're going to be using to uh, paint to help us guide different materials and you see me dropping ambient occlusion there into the global folder but that just to help us see better what we're going to be doing but now I'm importing my dust material and then I'm going to select the concavity mask that we've done before there and I'm just going to make it my selection which you just do through quick uh, quick selection I think it's called where you just hit Q and then you paste it and then you hit Q again and then it's your selection basically then as you can see I'm just painting inside of that kind of through that mask right now and you see that all my dust is accumulated in the recesses in the cavities of my objects and using you know all the convenient Photoshop brushes that I'm used to I can just go around and quickly lay down whole material touches right inside of Photoshop of how I want this to look and uh you know it's it doesn't really differ that much uh from the way you would usually produce your say usual diffuse map only you don't have to go back and propagate that across all, every single map type that you have because all of that is taken into account automatically so say here i know that i'm going to have a lot of dirt around the handle and i just go in and paint that with whatever you know brush you want and these are just a few examples of uh, you know how we can do that but then you know, I flip it around and now I'm painting all the scratches and uh, because I have the uh, my curvature map from my high frequency normal map I get all the fine scratching in there right away so that's in my selection I'm not using any kind of uh, you know fancy brush at this point uh, but then I can turn that selection off and just go very hands-on and kind of traditionally just paint stuff in if I want to uh, being probably a bit too sloppy right now but it happens 
and yeah so this is just to show that you can be as kind of deliberate as you want and it's totally up to you and nothing's done here for you uh because sometimes you kind of need those final touches where there's i mean a lot of automation is quite good and i personally think that it's a great thing but sometimes you just want to go in and you know be very deliberate and this is sort of an example of how you can do that so with painting with your traditional you know brushes you're actually painting with materials here and then you as you see me go in and just lay down some more details you can see me oh yeah that's a good thing because uh material operates uh you know inside of the photoshop kind of psd structure but it's very open to any kind of detail adding and messing around with your material presets and interpretations it's uh all up to you you can change it you can add a detail like you've seen at the back of the bullet there this red round thingy I mean, it's not a problem, but now you just see me, hey, I flipped it to my roughness map or my metallic map, and they're all right there. So all I do right now is hit F3 in my case, and they're all saved out right there. That's it, your textures are done. This video might have been sped up three times, I think, but that just means that if you know what you're doing, you can get a full set of textures done for your unique asset in about 10 to 15 minutes, which is quite good in my opinion. But basically, yeah, I just hope that you guys might find some use for this tool, and I'm sharing my material library that I've produced, kind of working and testing this thing, and I look forward to you trying it out. And I'm a bit scared, actually. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, feel free to let me know what you think, good or bad, and thank you very much for trying it out. And uh, there's a big-ass PDF doc on how to use it, how to install it, and there's going to be a link in the description. So feel free to give it a spin. Thank you for your time, guys. Cheers.